Hi guys, welcome to part two of this video. Um, this is going to cover the last two groups of pieces that we didn't get onto in the first video. So yeah, I intended this to be one big long video, but it's way too big and long to be in one video. So hence this sort of improvised introduction into the next bit. But yeah, without further ado, please enjoy. <laughs> Moving on to the third lot of pieces, I kind of like to start it with one of Brower's studies, um, one of the simple studies, um, and it's number one, which is a homage to Debussy. And I think it's really good at this stage, from what we've been through up until now, um, to introduce this, because what it does is it introduces um, sort of small arpeggios and also slurs with the left hand. It also has kind of a little bit more of a strange timing than the others as well. So we kind of have a couple of bars of 12-8 and then 4-8 and 12-8 and 4-8 and it doesn't necessarily feel um, as kind of simple time-wise as we've had before. It doesn't make it necessarily loads more difficult to read, but it kind of introduces this new understanding of, okay, what does this key signature, key signature mean? Um, and yeah, it kind of, again, is a little bit, maybe one step up from what we've just done. So this is what it sounds like. And so on and so on. So as you can see, we have kind of a constant use of the thumb where in groups of three, the thumb's being used a lot and also we have these. And along with, we have a. So we're using all of the things that we've learned just in that bar. So that's bar eight, if you're looking at the music, I'll try and put it on there. Uh, we're using our thumb repeatedly and we've got uh, two notes together with the so that's kind of a com combination of sort of everything that we've just kind of built up to do. What I would have then gone on to um, with a view to playing something like Lagrima uh, which does have a couple of sort of half barres or you know things like that is something like uh, Carcassi's study number three which very lightly brushes on things like that. As you can see I mean I'll play the first section we have So there are a kind of combination of things that are introduced here. We have a little bit of chromaticism um, going forward. We have, sorry, um, we have the A sharp going to the B, and then also we have a barre here. The guitar's out of tune. So this kind of introduces the next level of things that we're going to want to think about when it comes to. Um, it comes to a piece that kind of encompasses all this. So this is a really, really great study. Um, it does maybe jump forward that little bit extra to what you might want um, next, because in the second section, we also kind of go up all the way up there to get back to. So, you know, you do kind of jump up the fretboard a little bit, but if you never go up there, then you'll never know what's there. So <laughs> as much as it's good to kind of gradually learn the fretboard, sometimes you do kind of, you know, you're playing a piece or a study and it goes up there and, you know, now you know the notes up there. That's, that is a perfectly viable way to learn the notes um, on the guitar. And then obviously you do it in a little bit more of a structured way as well. The Carcassi studies are actually probably one of my favorite sets of studies. Um, I just love reading through them. And yeah, they're, they're a lot of fun. An example of what might be quite a um, a good step forward from the Carcassi that we just did uh, could be this Allegretto Opus 30 by Giuliani, um, which I've just found in one of my old books. And what this does as well that the Carcassi didn't necessarily do um, is introduce small chords. 
And we also have a, um, a kind of continuous accompaniment such as... Which is also really important. If our aim is to play Lagrima at the end of all this, then that has the... We have that accompaniment underneath. So that's really important to be able to prepare for. We've got two separate lines going on at the same time. So if we can prepare for that in whatever way we can, whether that be taking them individually and then practicing them that way, or, you know, then it's always best to feel like, to come to the piece like, I'm familiar with this technique and I've done that before. So that's what we're going to try with this one. I'll just play through the first, uh, the first section of it, so the first maybe three lines. second line we have the accompaniment that starts which is just a really steady accompaniment with the tune on top it's so so similar to the one that we have in lagrima which is the and that we have on top so it's good, it's kind of preparing our fingers for that because your thumb is busy at the same time as you're doing the melody, obviously, um, which happens with 99.9% .9 of guitar music. <laughs> so yeah, something like this would be, I think, a good next step to what we're aiming for. Um, like I said before, all of these pieces are just examples of how you could work towards getting um, to that certain point, and our point today being getting to be able to play Lagrima by the end. This is not necessarily me saying this is how to do that, it's basically just me going through my old music, seeing what I can find, maybe seeing if I could put together a few things that could kind of get us there in a little bit of a maze. <laughs> so going on to our fourth set of pieces um, and final <laughs> with Lagrima hopefully at the end, uh, progressively we'll get there. Um, I'm going to start with Saw's Study in B minor. It's quite a famous one, um, but again, it just kind of works on getting that fluidity in with uh, all of the arpeggios. Um, <clears throat> if you don't know it, it basically is, uh, it uses kind of the same finger pattern for a lot of it and you kind of need that flexibility between all of your fingers. So I know maybe up until now we've concentrated mainly on P, I and M, but we also need to incorporate A too. So this is a really important one. It also goes a little bit further up the fretboard. So I think we get to a B, which is on the seventh fret in this study. Um, we get a lot of chromatic notes, a lot, a lot of chromaticism, and yeah, obviously in Lagrima we have the... Which, as you can see, is quite high up the fretboard, so it's good to kind of be climbing towards that so that we don't feel completely alienated when we get there. So I'll just briefly show you what this study sounds like. It's Again, it's a really, really popular one. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I definitely remember falling in love with it as soon as I started to play it when I first learned it and will probably do the same again once I've played it. <laughs> I'll probably be playing it for like the next two weeks after this, but I'll just play, um, I'll play a little bit of it just so you can hear what it's like. section and it gets really interesting and even more gorgeous. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's a really good one to take us on now to a piece that um, I used to absolutely love playing. It was one of those things where if anybody we had round at our house or went anywhere with the guitar and anybody said, oh, play us a piece, like it would be this one. It is going to be the piece that takes us to our final destination in this video. Um, it's a piece called Vuelvo al Sur, which is probably being pronounced wrong. Um, by Astor Piazzolla and yeah it's actually arranged by the fantastic arranger, composer, guitarist Gary Ryan. This I think was one of the first, actually it will have been the first Piazzolla piece that I ever played um, and it's basically from a book of easy guitar arrangements of Piazzolla 
And it's a great introduction into Piazzolla because obviously, as we all know, Piazzolla can be quite challenging to play. <laughs> Um, so this was one of those pieces that really, really got me into it, actually. I think this is a good piece to stick right before we get to Lagrima, purely because we're kind of, melody-wise, we're kind of here, there and everywhere in it. Um, we've also got the chords. I think at this stage it's good to get used to a lot of these different things and techniques um, all coming into play at once, because as, as you'll remember, we started off uh, concentrating on those one by one, and the more we've gone on, the more we've kind of put those together. Um, in a very, very, I should mention we have done this in a very, very, very compact, <laughs> compact little video, but um, yeah, in reality it does probably take a bit longer. We do kind of have to learn our notes a little bit further up the fretboard, which is going to come in very, very handy for the Targa. Um, and yeah, this piece again is such a good introduction to Piazzolla. Piazzolla can be really difficult to play on the guitar, so this book um, itself is easy, easy arrangements of Piazzolla by Gary Ryan is, um, yeah, it's a really, really great introduction to it. I'll just play the first little bit of this piece and yeah, hopefully you can go and check out the full version later on because it's really, really nice. Hopefully you'll get the idea of um, how we've kind of got to here through all of the maybe boring things that I talked about but also hopefully some interesting things. Um, again, this video isn't designed to give you a fast track to this piece at all. It's just a bit of fun of me reading through um, some of my old music that I've found. This isn't how I got to play things like Lagrima or anything. This is just me picking through different things and hopefully picking out some of the useful things from these individual studies and exercises. <laughs> that then brings us on to our final piece slash goal, which was to play Lagrima by the end of this video, which I'm gonna do anyway, so. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna play the first section just so you can kind of see how we've got here, hopefully, and yeah, I'm still not sure how long this video is gonna be, so if you sat here for the whole 10 slash 20 slash 30 or 40 minutes, then thank you. <laughs> we got there in the end. section. I feel like if I hadn't played this before, playing what we just went through, um, maybe over a matter of months as opposed to minutes, but that's the beauty of YouTube, um, would kind of prepare me quite well for that. I'm aware that this is just a bit of fun though and playing through my old music to see where it could lead. <laughs> the second section maybe is a little bit more complex, but I mean we have the, the slide from... thirds we maybe haven't really covered very much but big stretch <laughs> and we're spending quite a lot of time up the, the, uh, the fretboard like quite high up the fretboard So yeah, I think this again is a bit of a progression that way. It's a bit, a little bit more difficult to the piazzolla that we just went through. But this video is just a big mishmash of things that hopefully are getting gradually, gradually a little bit more difficult to uh, this piece. I really hope you've enjoyed um, this video. I know that it might seem a little bit random, <laughs> but I really, really wanted an excuse to just go through loads of my old music, show you guys what kind of thing that I did learn um, when I was a beginner. I have had that question quite a lot, so hopefully that's provided you with some answers. This obviously, like I said before, isn't everything that I played, far from it. There was so, so much stuff, but um, my memory fails me and I can't find most of it. So this is the stuff that I have found. So <laughs> um, it's been really, really fun to play back uh, through it all. 
and yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed it too. I'm gonna to stop rambling now because I've done enough of that in this video, but just wanna say again a huge thank you to all of you. Um, we reached 200,000 subscribers, which is amazing, so thank you again for that. As you can tell, I don't really know what to say, but yeah, thank you, and see you soon. <laughs> Thank you.